much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Amy Carr. I am the Vice President of Recruiting here at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. And today we are going to talk about why can't you get an interview right now? Um, and really to, to talk about where we are with international recruiting in 2024 um, and really how that affects interview availability. So I think the first and most important thing to talk about is the number of NCLEX passers. So if you look at this chart, you can see that 20, 2006 was an amazing year for international NCLEX passers. And then um, 2010 was a really good year. And then I think we all know that in 2020, it was really tough to get to an NCLEX center to take and pass the NCLEX. And even in 2021, many NCLEX centers around the world were closed. So in 2022, we started to see um, an increase in NCLEX passers. And then in 2023, the number of NCLEX passers throughout the world has really been incredible. Um, and I think that might be without the last quarter results posted yet. So there are 30,000 nurses around the world that have become US RNs this year, which is amazing. I think also the places that candidates are taking the, the NCLEX around the world has diversified. So there's still a large number of, of nurses that are taking the NCLEX in the Philippines, but there's also many people around the world that are taking the NCLEX in Brazil or South Africa or India. Um, there was a temporary NCLEX center that was in Qatar for a while. There's an NCLEX center that's going to open in Kenya later this year. And so there's more places for international NCLEX um, international NCLEX tests happen. And then I think something else that's happened this year is the next gen NCLEX rolled out, and that seems to be really successful. So many, many applicants have taken and passed the new version of the NCLEX, and so that has led to an enormous number of NCLEX passers uh, in 2023. So, um, what like what happened in terms of arrivals and hires? So um, in, you know, I think most people know that in the back half of 2023, we have now gone into retrogression. But at Worldwide, we were still able to help 912 international healthcare workers arrive in the U.S. and start working. Um, and we hired more than 4,000 international health care workers. And we have those clinicians that are currently in process uh, on their journey to the U.S. So I think, you know, there are an enormous amount of NCLEX passers, but there is also a huge number of jobs that are still available and candidates that are moving through the process, even though it may take just a little bit longer. So, and then like, what is, what is happening with retrogression? So how is that impacting what's going on in the U.S. in recruiting in 2024? So I think, um, first of all, employers are looking at, are there other visa opportunities? And so I think we've seen a, a new introduction of H-1B visas for RNs, which I think before was mostly for different positions. And so there are some employers that are now looking to hire H-1B visa RN candidates. Um, also, they're hiring H-1B medical technologists. And they're, you're not every RN is a good candidate for an H-1B visa. If you'd like to learn more about this, Ron Hoppe did a webinar recently, which you can find on our YouTube page, all about H-1B, H-1B visas and who qualifies and is it a good fit for you. I think also there's employers that are looking for candidates that wish to use a TN visa. And TN visas are work visas um, for a list of eligible candidates. Uh, and nurses and medical technologists are on the list. Um, if you are a citizen of Canada or Mexico. 
And so um, I think employers are looking for, for those folks because you can get that visa right at the border and it's, it's very easy to come to the U.S. and start working. And then I think really the other change is employers are not paying for premium processing right now unless you have a current priority date because the cost of premium processing is really not speeding up um, the actual process. It may take a little bit longer for your petition to get approved, but in the scheme of things, it's not gonna increase the wait time at all. So for employers, if they look at the cost benefit analysis, it's just not, it's just not cost effective for them at this time. So I think, you know, that's, that's a little bit of where we are and what happened in 2023. So what do we expect to happen in 2024? So I think the first thing is that U.S. healthcare employers continue to hire international RNs. Um, almost every international employer, um, especially any big re reputable organizations, have a whole staffing plan that you know that's forward looking for this year and then five years from now and 10 years from now and having an international partner in an international hiring plan is one part of that that almost every single u.s healthcare employer is focused on having um, we have an incredible number of partners and so you know there's we're really like all, all kinds of hospitals from Johns Hopkins to smaller regional hospitals like Cape Fear Valley all need to have an incredible international plan. So we think that employers will continue to hire and there will continue to be opportunities. Uh, there are though healthcare budgets. So in the US, when coronavirus was here, the government helped fund some of the relief efforts that were needed. And so there was a lot of extra money that to hire and bring in staff. And so I think today there is still absolutely money to bring in RNs and nurses. However, I think that one of the things that's important to know is that where like two years ago, a hospital may say, hire as many nurses as you can find. Today they have a budget and they may say, we can hire 25 nurses or we can hire 50 nurses. We can't hire everyone. So hospitals are looking at their budgets and making decisions about how many people they can hire based on their specific budget. Uh, also, the U.S. RN shortage continues. Um, it is it is real. Projections show that you know we will continue with a, a shortage of U.S. RNs for at least the next ten years, and some projections show longer than that. So it is real. Um, every nurse that goes to work, no matter where they go today, um, they're, they are experiencing shortages and there's not enough nurses coming out of nursing school in the U.S. to fill all of the jobs that are available. And so we, we expect for U.S. employers to continue to need nurses for, for years and years in the future. Um, contingent and travel labor is being minimized. So US employers are looking at ways to not have to pay for the shorter contract travel nurses. Um, generally speaking, those the agency cost for those nurses are extreme and it's very difficult on a budget. And so direct hire is being prioritized by many, many organizations across the, across the US, both for domestic nurses and for international nurses. Um, it's more cost effective. And I think um, studies show that nurses that work, or really almost anybody, but healthcare workers and, and nurses particularly that are direct employees of a hospital are also happier and have more satisfaction. Um, also hospitals, we talked about hospitals being budget conscious. I think also important to know that um, sometimes hospital budgeting cycles affect when they're going to hire. So I think we often hear questions about, I want to go to, you know, Johns Hopkins or Nova, um, and we may not have interviews available immediately because the hospital may not finalize their budget 
until like maybe July. And if they finalize, if their budget year is from July 1 to June 30th, then they may not be ready to create a new request and, and need for international nurses until halfway through the year. And so depending on their budget cycle, the hospital's requests may come in at different times based on, you know, based on their staffing model and how they plan. And then I think maybe lastly, um, healthcare in the U.S. has seen um, over the past several months, and I think we will continue to see it in 2024, but unions have increased and, and continue to increase their influence on healthcare workers. There have been several big and really good hospital systems in the U.S. that have experienced strikes for different clinicians across their system. And as union negotiations are happening, um, one of the things that unions are supportive of is direct hire. And so sometimes, you know, we may see it unions influence organizations to continue to use direct hire as opposed to travel or contingent workers. All right. Um, and let me just mention, um, if you have questions, I am happy to, to tackle those at the end. So please put those in the chat. And we'll be happy to do the, the Q&A for any questions that you may have at the end. So I think, like, most importantly, maybe for a nurse, if you are thinking about coming to the U.S. and you have worked really hard to study and pass the NCLEX, and you're trying to think about, you know, what is the right employer for you, um, I think it's important to think about what U.S. employers are looking for right in this moment. And so I think they are looking to hire their highest volume positions. So if, if I am working at a hospital and I have to staff a hospital, I am going to need more nurses of the kinds of nurses where we have the most nurses. So most hospitals hire more med surge nurses than any other nurse. So we generally have more med surge nurse openings. Um, we also have a fairly large amount of ICU. And then I think step down and progressive care are all areas where we continue to see great needs. Be There's also fewer specialty units available. So for anything that has to do with children, um, you know, pediatric ICU, NICU, um, anything that's in surgical services, like um, OR, um, endo, PACU nurses, any of those, we are seeing less, um, less openings because the hospitals employ less of those. And I think also domestically, there are lots of nurses who are interested in those specific areas as well. So if you're somebody who currently works in um, a specialty unit, uh, you know, you may either need to wait a little bit longer for an interview, I think, or expect to wait for a while, um, or think about if there's another area that you would be willing to work in for, you know, for the, the time that you have a contract in the U.S. before transferring to a different department. I think employers are looking for flexibility. Um, you know, the needs in the U.S. are still great. But it is not exactly the same as it was during COVID. And so, you know, when in the time that a nurse gets hired from when they arrive to the U.S., some of the needs might change. And so I think they're looking for flexibility and, you know, perhaps maybe going to work on a different med surge floor or being willing to work a different shift. I think that those are those are the sort of flexibility that U.S. employers are looking for. Um, they're also looking for candidates to do a really great job in their interview. Um, I think that no longer are U.S. employers going to hire, um, you know, just anybody who is who is available. They are going to look for someone who has the right skills, who who has prepared for their interview and is really putting their best foot forward. Uh, they're also, one thing that's really important to hospitals that are hiring international RNs is having experienced bedside nurses. Um, 
there are lots of nurses that are coming out of college and coming straight out of the university into hospital systems. And I think one of the big gaps that hospitals have and are trying to fill with international nurses is to hire nurses with really great current bedside experience. And so I think it's important to, to know that your experience is one of the main factors that an employer is looking for today. They're also looking for people with past leadership experience. Um, they desperately need bedside experience, so they are going to hire nurses that are going to come and work in a bedside role. But they also want to hire people who can be future leaders in their organization um, because so many of the experienced nurses with leadership have retired early. So having leadership experience is a real plus. And then I think something that's important to note is that employers are looking for commitment and passion to the employer that you are interviewing for. Um, they want you to be um, committed to their mission and excited to work with their population. And so I, I know that there's a lot of interviews available. One thing that we have seen is sometimes nurses will interview and they'll ask the employer who they're interviewing for or where the location is. I think it's really important to do research and understand the kind of organization it is, um, what the organization supports, what their mission is, and why you as a nurse would want to commit to this, this employer in this location. Um, I think, you know, when, one thing is that employers really need for nurses that are going to come and work to stay with them for the, for the commitment, the time. Like it's really important, whether it's two years or three years, the employer really needs for the nurse to be committed. And if in an interview, a candidate does not appear to be committed, Today, U.S. employers are going to pass on that candidate and they're going to go and, and interview some additional candidates to make those choices. So the interview is really important. We just talked about that. Um, the making sure that you're committed to an employer is really important. Your experience is really important. So what are the things that you can do in order to be prepared? So before you, before you interview to get your job, um, work on your experience. Focus on, on getting the best experience that you can. Um, there, we talked about how there are so many NCLEX passers today. Um, lots of, lots of international NCLEX passers, which is so exciting. However, that means that for every person who is looking to get a job in the U.S., there's also more competition. And so those folks that have the very best experience and the best background are going to get prioritized for the very best employers. So making sure that you focus on getting really great experience as a nurse um, is, is really important. I think also making sure that you are you are working on your English skills. If you don't already tune in regularly to watch Carrie's Corner, um, Carrie's Corner is on Facebook Live on the Worldwide Health Staff Facebook page. Um, the next episode is tomorrow. It's 8.30 Eastern time in the US. Um, it'll be 9.30 p.m. in the Philippines and somewhere in between for the rest of the world. So if you haven't watched Carrie's Corner, please tune in to watch that. Um, also, practice your U.S. interview skills and research interview questions. We have a YouTube that someone on our recruiting team, Kelsey, has done on the Worldwide um, Health Staff YouTube page that talks about interview preparation and what kinds of questions to ask. And so be prepared, do, do your research, look at interview questions, and I think um, also be detailed. So look at, like, be, be prepared to give really good examples about behavioral questions and about specifics of the work that you do technically in your nursing role. Uh, the better the hospital and clinic, the more technical questions they will ask you. And so make sure that, you're, that you are working on all of those skills. 
Um, your recruiter here is also happy to help you practice if you if that's something that you'd like for them to do. Learn about other states. So opportunities in some of the, the more famous U.S. states like California, Florida, Texas, and New York are very competitive and sometimes hard to come by. However, there are 46 other states in the U.S. that people love to live in. Um, I you know, Worldwide head, Health staff is headquartered in North Carolina, and I am North Carolina's biggest fan. I think it's a great place to live. Um, we have a webinar where we recently talked about North Carolina as a great state to live in, um, but it's just one of many. There are many incredible states in the U.S. that have, like, really great cost of living, safe places to raise children, lovely people, great food, wonderful neighborhoods. Um, and so I think making sure that you take time to research different states um, and think about whether you want to live in a city um, or if you want to live in a, you know, outside the city, what kind of commute times are you interested in? What kind of cost of living? And think about school zones um, in the U.S., we have a public school system, so every child can go to school for free. Um, however, some schools are better than others. And looking at like which school zones, um, you know, are the best ones, I think is important. And also important to know that in every single state, in every single state, there are cities that are safer. There are cities that are, are more dangerous than others. There are big cities. There are small cities. There are more expensive cities. There are cities where the cost of living is, is less expensive. And so there is no one state where um, it's all the same. So I think looking at cities within states is also very important. Um, also, some states are really, really, really big. Like California is a huge state. So if you have family in Southern California, but you are going to go live in Northern California, like that is an hours and hours and hours and hours of drive from the top of California to the bottom. Or as perhaps if you lived in Washington, you may or like or or in a different state closer in another way, you might be able to get to your family closer. So I think spending time really just learning about different opportunities in the U.S. is is a great way to know that to know that opportunities might not look exactly the way that you think, but that there might be a really great opportunity in a state you've never thought about, like Iowa or Wisconsin or Ohio, um, places that have like really safe, um, really safe, really lovely, nice, kind, wonderful people where the cost of living is really good. And it might be a great place to start in the U.S. So, um, so we know that there are, there's a lot of NCLEX passers. We know that hospitals are still going to hire, but there's still, there's many, many applicants for the positions that are open. So what, what is your recruiter going to do in the meantime? So they are going to help discuss with you what your goals are. And so if you have, if you feel very strongly about a position in a location, then your recruiter is going to make a note of that and keep track of you and touch base with you and let you know when those positions become available. Um, however, because there are so many nurses right now in the talent pool, um, if you are flexible in location and sometimes position, that may mean that you might find an interview sooner. So please have a, and there, that's another thing they're going to chat with you about. You know, if you say, I only want a job that is for a PACU nurse in California, then, you know, it, it might be quite some time before you're able to get an interview. If you say, I'm open to med surge positions and I'm willing to look, you know, look at some other states, tell me what might be available, then we can say we've got, you know, we, we think we're going to be doing interviews for Pennsylvania very soon. You know, here's the system. Think about whether this is going to be a good fit for you. 
And then if there's more flexibility, you're more likely to get an interview sooner rather than later. Um, they're also going to ask you to consider looking at an employer very closely before you interview. Um, if the employer, if you if you know that the employer is not going to be a good fit, we don't want you to, to, you know, spend your time and anxiety interviewing for them. Um, we want to help you find what is the right fit for you. And so we're going to ask you to consider the location and the employer before you make the decision to interview. And we are committed. Um, every recruiter on our team is is committed to helping you find the right opportunity. Um, and I think I think sometimes just knowing that finding the right opportunity sometimes might mean patience. Like if it doesn't, if you don't see the right thing for you and you're not comfortable, then that's okay. We're happy to stay in touch with you until the right thing does come along. Um, we are committed to committed to helping you find the right spot. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things, if your goal is you're very, very flexible um, and you're, you have the ability to go anywhere, um, if you're, and your goal is to get to the U.S. really fast, let your, let your recruiter know that as well. And we'll do our best to, to get you a place there. So while you're waiting, what should you do? Um, one, learn everything you can. Learn about life in the U.S., learn about saving money, like watch webinars, follow worldwide on social media, um, learn about what's happening in the immigration world, um, make friends with other people who are going to come to the U.S., find out what organizations you can join when you get here, um, do all, all of the research. Um, there's some really some really interesting nurse influencers that are on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok that have already made the transition to the U.S. Um, and I think they're a really interesting place to, to look. I mean, you can't believe everything that you read on the Internet, right? But it's also it's like it'll help you think about different things and it might help inform you about different places where you would like to live in the U.S. Um, attend Carrie's Corner. Learn all of the trips, tips and tricks about the English exam. Once you do find a job and we do get your petition filed, that's the next big thing is to pass your English exam. Um, and just a, just a note about English exams. Um, you want to make sure that you don't take an English exam until you do have a job. Because the English, every English exam is not accepted in every single state. And you may fall in love with the state and learn that it doesn't take the PTE. So don't take your English exam until you have already received a job and you know what state you're going to go to so you can get licensed in that state. And then stay in touch with your recruiter. You know, stay like you, you don't have to email them every day. But stay in touch with them. And if your needs change, then you know, make sure you let them know. Um, also, I think connect with your, your colleagues and find out what they know and, and who they know in the U.S. Um, if we are able to get you close to some support system that's already in the U.S., I think that's, you know, that would be ideal. Um, but I think one of the great things is that, you know, as more international nurses arrive in the U.S., Sometimes there's an amazing group of international nurses in a spot that you might not think there would be. Um, and there's there may already be an amazing support group for you. Right. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please put your questions in the chat. Um, absolutely happy to, to help answer any questions that that you have today. I haven't seen any come through yet, but if there are any questions, please let me know. Um, you can also chat with a recruiter right now live on our live chat on our page. Um, it's linked right here, so you're always welcome to connect directly with a recruiter through live chat. Um, if you have already been talking to a recruiter, please feel free to connect with them um, over email or ask them to schedule a call. Um, and then Bala, we mentioned this, but make sure that you follow us on social, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, um, make sure that you follow us on TikTok and YouTube so that you can continue to get all of the immigration updates um, 
any webinar updates that we have. And then last but not least, um, always remember that it's great to, to refer your friends. We will pay up to $250 for your referral when their petition is approved. Um, however, it's also really nice to go on this journey with a friend um, and so or a colleague, and we are happy to happy to help with any of those. All right, so I still don't see any questions. Um, so I am going to go ahead and, and wrap up. So I think, you know, in summary, um, 2024, I think, is going to continue to be an amazing year for international nurses. Um, we have probably more options for employers than there have ever been in, in international nurse recruiting history. Um, you know, worldwide health staff has been around for such a long time. And the 25 years that we've been around, you know, I, I think that we've never worked with more clients. We've never had more acute care jobs that are open. Um, we've never had like any better client list than we have today. I think there is a lot of competition. There is a there's a ton of folks that have passed the NCLEX internationally around the world. And there's a lot of really talented nurses that have really fantastic experience. And so as a result, um, it might take a little bit of time to find exactly the right interview for you. The best thing to do is to make sure that you do your research right now ahead of time and use your recruiter as a resource to partner with you and help you with ideas of where, but where your future goals are um, and how we can help you get there. And then while you're waiting for the right interview, make sure that you're doing everything to prepare yourself. So when you find the right employer, that you do an amazing job in your interview. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Um, we appreciate we appreciate you joining, and we also appreciate everybody who trusts us to help them on their USA journey. Um, we value that, and we look forward to helping you find the best job. Thanks so much, and have a good evening or afternoon.